business. What's in it for me? How many of you would agree with that? Yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at why ACM. Well, let's take a look at ACM for a moment. $549, $449 if you're in New Zealand. Is that a low, low outlay to start a business? Yes. Of course it is. Not only that, and by the way, for those of you who are looking at ACM today compared to how it was in 2006, ACN is a thousand times more powerful today. You see, when we got started in 2006, we had one service, toll calls. Challenge with toll calls, most people I knew had toll bars. <laughs> Couldn't even acquire the customers. But luckily we had vision. You see, my mother said, if they can start with toll calls, if we do a great, great job, maybe one day they'll bring mobile. Maybe one day they'll bring internet. Look at what we have today. We have a suite of products and those products are continuing to expand, which I think is just incredible. The other thing, the point I want to make is, when we used to acquire our customers, we used to have to fax our customer forms through. And this is what, true story, if we acquired three or more customers, we'd be sitting there faxing them through, and then praying that head office collected them at the other end. <laughs> and if the points didn't show up within five days, we're ringing the company asking, um, did you get our fax? And they said, sorry, we didn't. Can you refax them? So what do we do today? We have our business on our phones. You know, I go to the gym often. I talk to the people I'm working out with. I ask them a question. I have a business. I run from home. I look at other ways to help people save money on their bills. Can I ask you a question? If I could help you save money with no cost to you, would you give me the opportunity to try while we're stretching? <laughs> you see, your business is wherever you are. As long as you've got access to the internet. I signed up a gentleman for two mobiles and electricity, true story, within five minutes after a class. Not only that, he asked me after my third service, what else do you do, okay? So what we have today is incredible. That's why ASIN is such a powerful, powerful business. But what I'd like to do very quickly is I'd like to show you another video. And this video, I believe, is going to open the eyes to most people out there. It's going to open your eyes today. In fact, some of you are going to get scared by what you watch. Okay? So enjoy the video. Let's watch it, and then I'll come back and continue. Mass automation. It's already here, but it's about to kick into hyperdrive. Some estimate 57% of all the world's jobs are at risk. There will be fewer and fewer jobs that a robot cannot do better. This is going to be a massive social challenge. Creative industries will mostly be okay, as will the engineers that actually make and maintain our new robot overlords. But farmers, tradies and truckies, some of the most common jobs in the world, sorry, you guys are in strife. Up to 5 million Aussies are at risk of losing their jobs over the next decade or so. That's 40% of our workforce, and those jobs aren't coming back. Supermarket giant Coles is turning to robot shoppers in the battle for a greater slice of the $3 billion online grocery game. Coles is spending up to $150 million to build two stadium-sized distribution centres in Melbourne and Sydney, where Ocado's robots pick and pack customer orders to be delivered to your door the same day. Right now, it's Coles staff who pick and pack online orders by hand from the shop floor. Once the new robot workforce is up and running, the supermarket expects to double the number of orders it can process, boosting profits significantly too. The first home ever constructed by a robot has been built right here in Perth, but the company behind it insists the technology won't take tradies' jobs. Tonight we can show you an exclusive first look at the house that went up in less than three days. Block after block, it's hard to believe this one-armed robot is building a house. The three-bedroom, two-bathroom home are world first in High Wycombe. The structure complete in just 33 hours. The engineers believe eventually they can get it to move four times faster. So when you think about that in the context of what we're trying to achieve, we're at least you know, 20 times faster than a traditional bricklayer. The FBR machines only require a single operator and can build day and night. A 110 kilogram security robot called Harriet. She's touted as being faster, safer and more cost effective than hiring a human security guard. Security company Advanced Security believes she has the potential to revolutionise the industry. The fact that they never need holidays, never get sick and never get tired means that it can work for up 
to 20 hours. And at a cost of around 12 to $16 an hour to hire, it's cheaper than a human. There's already been interest from ports, hospitals and airports, and Advanced Security is looking to link them up with its drone security service. Up to half our existing jobs will be replaced by robots, nanotechnology and AI within 10 to 15 years. Driverless trucks and cars are being tested worldwide. Chatbots are already being rolled out for customer service roles. Robots are assisting surgery. Accountants, actuaries and lawyers are all about to be disrupted. Google's head of engineering predicts by 2029, computers will reach singularity, where you won't be able to tell the difference between a computer and a human. Can I help you find something? This autonomous multilingual robot is designed to help customers at the home improvement chain Lowe's get their shopping done as quickly as possible. You're like, oh my gosh, there's an autonomous robot inside of a Lowe's. Awesome. But what may look awesome for Lowe's and many of the nation's other businesses could spell anxiety for American workers. At an Amazon concept store in Seattle, sensors allow customers to shop, walk out, and pay via a wireless account. Andrew Charlton's research reveals about a third of tasks done by accountants, insurance clerks, actuaries, and even librarians can be done by software or machines. With automation, the professions most affected are male-dominated. The obvious ones like construction and mining, but even specialists like glaziers, tilers, plasterers and painters, as well as fabricators, mechanics, plant operators and the printing trades will also be hit. There are more than 800,000 people, almost entirely men, who spend more than two thirds of their time on automatable tasks that machines are expected to replace. Up to 60% of young Australians currently in education are studying for jobs that are highly likely to be automated over the next 30 years. That's 60% of young people training for jobs that may not even exist during the period of their careers. Whoa.